funky religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. You don't believe in the Force, do you? Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff, but I've never seen anything to make me believe there's one all-powerful force controlling everything. There's no mystical energy field that controls my destiny. It's all a lot of simple tricks and nonsense. I suggest you try it again, Luke. This time, let go your conscious self and act on instinct. <laughs> With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Uh, where are the roots of this spirituality? From when did, from where did this come? Well, what happened was the uh, when we were uh, preparing Star Wars, and actually when when uh, George was writing through the drafts of Star Wars, one of the elements of the story is in the Ben Kenobi character is the fact that there is some kind of spiritual dimension to his character and to the, the, uh, the background of his, of his character. So we felt it was important and, and George felt it was very important that the spiritual dimension be there but be simple enough that we didn't have to explain a lot. So that was the origin of, of the, the the force and the spiritual side. On Empire, the first draft of the script was written by Lee Brackett, who was a, a very famous science fiction writer and an old-time Hollywood uh, writer. And she had written science fiction novels as well. Unfortunately, she died just as she was finishing the first draft. And Larry Kasdan, Lawrence Kasdan, uh, uh, came in to do the draft of the of the Empire Strikes Back, and we worked extensively uh, with him on the idea of the spiritual dimension of the story because of the Yoda character and how the, how that fits in with the uh, with the rest of the adventure story that we were telling. 